Hello everyone, my name is Russell Brewer and I am an Associate Professor in Criminology here at the University of Adelaide and the Program Coordinator for the Bachelor of Criminology. Today I'm going to provide a short orientation to both the Bachelor of Criminology degree as well as provide information um, as part of your orientation to all double degrees, major and minor sequences. Now today I'm going to talk about study plans in terms of what it is that you need to study. We're going to talk about uh, ways to succeed in your first year of study here at the University of Adelaide. We're going to talk about different places and services that are available to give you help as you progress throughout your degrees. And then I'm also going to provide you with some information about how you can keep up to date with the latest happenings here in criminology here at the University of Adelaide. So let's talk first about what it is you are going to study. And in particular, I'm going to give you a rundown of how your degree works and how you can find more information about how your degree works and what you should be enrolling in as uh, you progress through your studies here at Adelaide. The first thing you need to do, regardless of what degree program you are enrolled in, is to get your hot little hands on a copy of your study plan. So if you're enrolled in a Bachelor of Criminology, you'll be able to, or any major or any minor, you're going to be able to access and download a study plan which will tell you exactly what it is you need to be enrolling in from one semester to the next. Now you can easily find, go and find and download your study plan online. Now I've provided a link here. If you are, uh, you can see it up on the slide on the screen. Uh, if you're in the Bachelor of Criminology, you can type that particular address into your uh, URL bar in your web browser or if you're in a major or minor sequence you can do the same with that second dot point link or if we want to make it a little bit easier let me just shoot over here to the Google machine and I'll make this a little bit bigger just so you can see this so now that we're in Google we can just type Adelaide criminology study plans press enter we click here on this first link that comes up, Study Plans, Faculty of Arts, University of Adelaide. That will take us to the Faculty's Study Plan landing page. If we scroll down, we can find our degree. We are undergraduate students and we are enrolled, uh, in this case, in the Bachelor of Criminology. And here we can find links to PDFs of each of the different permutations of the Bachelor of Criminology degree, be it the Bachelor of Criminology standalone or a major in psychology, a B-Crim with a major in psychology, with a minor in psychology, a major in sociology, a minor in forensic medicine, a Bachelor of Criminology with a minor in gender studies, politics, public health, sociology, or combined degrees, the Bachelor of Criminology with the Bachelor of Laws or the Bachelor of Criminology with the Bachelor of Laws honors. So just for the sake of uh, this demonstration, let's just click on the standalone degree. And what this will do is open up a PDF, which you can and you should download and print off, where this um, is a very self-explanatory document. It will tell us what, here's a legend with the different colors. We've got um, units and electives in terms of what your rule requires you to take. So uh, you must complete a total of 72 units of courses with at least 12 units uh, and no more than 24 units of level 1 courses and at least 24 units of level 3 courses. You have your core courses that are articulated here in a dark gray, your criminology component of your degree, so you must complete 45 units of criminology courses, which includes 15 units of criminology closed elective courses. I'll talk about that in a second. And then you've got electives here in blue. You must complete a total of 24 units of elective courses with at least nine units of broadening electives, that is courses from any discipline other than crim, geog, and Saki. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. So if we scroll down and here's links to further information, we scroll down here, we can see what the actual study plan looks like in terms of what you need to complete at each year of study. So again, you've got that core 
course that you need to take at level one in here in year one. You have got your uh, first year CRIM courses, that being CRIM 1001, Understanding Criminology. You'll take that in semester two. CRIM 1002, this is in semester one. Uh, you've got Law 1100, Introduction to Law, which you'll be taking in your first year as well. And then you've got your level one or level two CRIM closed elective course. So a closed elective means that it is a, uh, you get to choose what course that you take, but it is a from, you make that choice from a closed list of different option courses. And I'll show you how to find that closed list in a minute. Now, that list is a specially tailored list of courses that we believe are uh, highly relevant to your progression through your degree in criminology. Then you've also got three other courses that you take um, that are uh, of your choice. So these are not courses that, these are courses that either can appear on that closed elective list or can be taken from anywhere else in the university. So by taking all of these courses listed here uh, under year one, you will fulfill your year one requirements for the Bachelor of Criminology. And then as you move into second year, you'll do the exact same thing. You'll enroll in CRIM 2001, GEOG 2129, SOCI 2012. You will select two different level two criminology closed elective courses, as well as three separate elective courses at year two. As you move into year three, the same thing again. CRIM 3002, Criminological Research, CRIM 3004, Quant Research Methods, SOCI 3014, Qualitative Research Methods, CRIM uh, a Level 3 Criminology Closed Elective Course, and then a second Level 3 criminology, criminology Closed Elective Course, and then two electives at Level 3, and that comprises your entire Bachelor of Criminology. Now, it's very, very, very important that you identify and download your correct study plan because uh, you shouldn't be relying explicitly on the enrollment system to choose what course, courses you will take in each subsequent semester. Sometimes the enrollment system may permit you to enroll in courses that do not coincide with your study plan. And when you get to the end of your degree, you might find that you not, have not fulfilled the requirements of your degree. So it's really important to download this document and use this as your enrollment Bible. As you go through and select the courses that you're going to take for each coming semester, you need to make sure that you tick off all of the core courses. You need to tick off all of the closed elective courses and you need to tick off each and every elective that you've taken and to ensure that you, um, by the time you reach the end of year three, down here at the bottom, that you have completed all of the courses required to fulfill this particular degree. Now, we talked a little bit about closed electives. If I just go back to this main page here, what I can do is I can scroll down to the bottom and I see here closed a closed elective tab. I can click on that, head down to criminology, and you will find a list of the different closed electives that are available from semester to semester, from year to year. Now you need to make sure that you go back to this page and check this page every year as the closed electives that are available are available from one year to the next will certainly change throughout your degree. So keep an eye out for courses um, that you might be interested in and take those when they become available. You can see, for example, on this particular page, the list of closed electives that are offered right now this year. Uh, and as you scroll down to the bottom, you can actually see a list of other courses that are not currently being offered, but may be offered in subsequent years. So you can get a sense, a taste of what might be uh, to come as you progress throughout your degree. So keep an eye on this page. Let's shoot back now and let's just talk briefly about majors and minors. You might be doing a 
Bachelor of, for example, Psychological uh, Science with a major in Criminology. Again, you are going to have a study plan for your Bachelor of Psychological Science but also for the major sequence in criminology. So we can find that again on this exact same page, instead of clicking on criminology up here, we just go down to majors and minors, and then we head over to criminology, and we can see again, we've got a study plan that outlines what your rules are. So if you're doing a major, that would be to complete 24 units of courses including six units at level one, nine units at level two, nine units including the capstone course at level three, or a minor, 18 units including six units at level one, six units at level two, or six units at level three with no cap, and six units up le at level three with no capstone being required. And you can see here exactly what it is you will be required to take at level two, or sorry, level one, here at level two, here, and then here at level three. And again, this page tells us precisely uh, what the course code is, what the name of the course is, what semester it's going to be running, and on the right hand side here, what that course is worth. So if you are Every student should make sure that they have downloaded and understand their study plans for their uh, the degree in which they're enrolled in and any major or minor sequence that uh, they might decide to take on. So let's bring me back and press on. So now I want to move away from talking about study plans and what you'll be taking to discussing how you can really succeed in your first year. I've got a couple of hot tips that I'd like to share with you as I've been teaching first year actually for a while and I've seen a few trends that are consistent with doing really, really well in your first year of study. The first thing I would say is insofar as is possible, be present. You should attend any lectures, workshops, or uh, seminars or tutorials uh, that are made available to you. Be, there is no substitute for attending and participating. This gives you an opportunity to meet new people and to really get involved in the different activities and uh, that are available within your course and being giving you an opportunity to be more active in university life more generally. Now, some of the seminars or workshops that you might enroll in may be undertaken online. That's okay, but again, be there, be prepared, be involved, talk, and interact with other people. It will greatly enhance the experience that you have at university. If you have an opportunity to be on campus, come, even if it's cold, even if it's raining. There's an opportunity to interact with your tutors, to interact with your lecturers, to interact with other students, make friends, and develop your networks as you progress through your degree. When preparing for your classes, you need to make sure that you read, 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 and be prepared. That means for every course, you'll be given a course guide or a syllabus, and you need to make sure that you really, really carefully read that course guide, familiarize yourself with all of the content, with what is expected of you, with when everything is due, and make sure that you manage, plan that all out, and manage your time appropriately. Now, success at university, I reckon, is about 90 to 95% all about time management. The students who do really well are the students who are able to space out their work across a semester. So, get yourself a diary read those uh, course guides, ascertain when everything is due, write it into your diaries, and work out exactly when you are going to work on what. Plan your work accordingly, plan it around, uh, plan it around any other extracurricular work that you might have, and make sure uh, to, to manage your time appropriately as you proceed through the semester. It'll be a lot less stressful, and the quality of your work will be a lot higher. 
Also, of course, it's not just about time management, it's also about preparation. When you cut for each of your classes, for each of your tutorials, you're going to be assigned a set of readings. Now, usually those readings are not too onerous. So you want to make sure that you want to have read and synthesized all of that material prior to coming to each one of your tutorials. You want to be able to take advantage of those tutorials. You don't, and you want to be able to contribute and you want to be able to learn from those tutorials. It's not very helpful if you come to those seminars or tutorials um, just as a blank canvas, try, canvas trying to soak up information, having not done the readings or prepared or, or uh, revised for that particular uh, week's worth of work. So just make sure you come to class prepared and ready to participate. You're going to get a lot more out of your class and you're going to learn a lot more uh, from the class and it's actually going to help feed in to your assignments and better prepare you to do really well across your first year. Another thing that I like to say is to make sure that you check your student email account daily. I cannot stress this enough. When the university, when a lecturer, when your tutor wants to reach out to you, they will do so via email. And you want to make sure that you catch those urgent messages as they come in and be prepared to respond to them. Of course, when writing any email, you want to be polite and courteous and you want to be really, really clear. Make sure to sign off on your name and also provide us with your student numbers. Remember, sometimes our classes have five, six hundred students in them, so you want to make it as easy as you can when you're corresponding with your lecturer or your tutor to make sure that they know who you are and exactly what it is that you are asking. And of course, of course, if you have questions about anything, to do with your course or anything to do with your course structure or what you should be doing, you should absolutely feel free to reach out and ask us any questions. Your lecturers, your tutors, all of us. Uh, faculty, staff, I'll, I'll talk about that in a, little bit, in a little bit. But remember, we are here for you. We are paid to be here and help you. So please don't hesitate to reach out. You are not an imposition if you have any questions. We are here to help and we want to see you succeed. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit more about getting help at university. There are a lot of different, of different services and resources available to students in their first years and as they progress uh, throughout to their degree in terms of adjusting to university life. There's a helpful, helpful page um, that I've linked in my slide above um, that's provide some handy links to uh, various resources available across the university. Um, I've actually just pulled a few of the really relevant ones out because I want to speak to them explicitly. Firstly, security. You never know when you might need access to um, security or you might need help whilst on campus. So I would encourage absolutely everybody watching this video to Stop, pause the video, and insert this phone number into your telephone, 8313-5990. Security is incredibly responsive, and they are here to help you. You never know, having this number in your phone may save your life. So put the number in your phone. I have, in fact, use the number uh, on occasion on campus, typically when I accidentally lock myself out of my office. But having that number handy could be very helpful and very timely. Uh, Student Life is also a free and confidential counseling service that is available to all students across the university. So if you are struggling with anything to do with your university life uh, in terms of the work that you need to do or uh, you might have some, some personal issues that you would like to discuss with someone, please, please, please take advantage of the Student Life Counseling Support Services. If you have a disability, you should also reach out to Student Life Disability Support who uh, are entrusted with helping manage disabilities or medical conditions for students. So I would encourage you to uh, give that a Google and make an appointment to see one of the disability support advisors as soon as is possible. This is a great thing to do as you are starting out at uni to see how the university can support you in your study. If you have any troubles writing or want to get some um, 
some additional help in that area, we have a fabulous writing center, which provides academic learning and language support to students, as well as a raft of other resources. So please, 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 uh, if you're looking to improve your writing skills, um, have a look at the uh, writing center and the uh, support that they offer. Uni Thrive is also a group which explores ideas and helps with resilience, well-being, overcoming problems, and boosting performance. And then, and importantly, if you have any questions about your enrollment, your in terms of what you need to be enrolling in next, if you're having problems with en the enrollment system, you can reach out to the our fabulous colleagues at the Faculty of Arts um, office. They can deal with any problems relating to enrollments, your study plan. They can even help you map out your own study plan if you're unsure of what to enroll in next. If you want to contact the Faculty of Arts office, you can easily do that. Uh, you can just drop in. It's the bottom floor of the Napier buildings on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 9 to 5 uh, p.m. or Tuesdays from 11 to 5 or Friday from 9 to 4. You can also send easily just send an email, arts at adelaide.edu.au. You can give them a ring at 8313-5245 or you can even reach out on Facebook at the Uni University of Adelaide Faculty of Arts Student Group. Um, on Facebook, there are also a number of ways that you can uh, keep up to date with what is happening at Adelaide Crim. First, I would encourage all of you to join the Adelaide Criminology Student Association. This is a fantastic group for students who organize various events, provide various resources for uh, students, and provide particularly opportunities to network. So you can actually just look for the Adelaide Criminology Student Association on Facebook. Um, you, can, you can also, in fact, find them on Twitter as well, where you'll find a link uh, to sign up, join membership, uh, uh, and join the association. Membership is free, so please do do this. This is a service that we have created for you to enhance your experience, and we think that you'll get a lot out of it. Also, Adelaide Crim is on Twitter, so you can find out updates about our teaching program, the research undertaken by various academics around um, our department, as well as get updates on uh, various events that are happening on campus or via the uh, Criminology Student Association. So head over to Twitter, www.twitter.com slash Adelaide Crim, or if you're already on Twitter, just find our username, Adelaide Crim, give us a follow, and you'll be able to keep up to date. So that is a very brief introduction to criminology here at the University of Adelaide. We wish you the best in your first year of study. And again, don't be a stranger. Get involved. If you have any questions, reach out. Remember, we're always here to help. Great. Well, take care. See ya.